Welcome everyone to my Galactic Civilizations 3 guide. Hello, my name is Max and the purpose of this guide is to help you get better at Galaxy 3 so you'll be able to successfully take on harder difficulty levels than you might be currently able to. Now, this guide is going to be separated into a number of videos. Each video will concern itself with a certain topic. This first video will look at early gameplay and colony ship spamming which is really incredibly important on most maps that you're probably going to be playing on. Uh, the real wealth in the game is the planets that you're able to colonize. Each planet produces certain resources, production, uh, research, wealth, and they're really crucial in winning the game. The more planets you have, the better you're probably doing. Now, the race that I'm going to be playing as are the Terrans. They actually have a few race traits which help them out in colony ship spamming especially. So they actually have a point in movement, a bit of extra range, and some manufacturing boosts as well. And they actually have a couple of abilities which might help out early game as well. They have an improvement for free on all of their new colonies, and they suffer from less shipyard decay. So they're a really good race for colony spamming. So let's uh, sh quickly show you the map settings, which probably aren't really important for me to show you, but I'll show them to you nonetheless. And let's get started. Okay, so the map's finally loaded. So let's check out where we are on this huge, loose, clustered map. So it looks like we're on this eastern side. And there's a huge uh, expanse of nothingness in the middle. Each map presents you with a certain difficulty. So in this circumstance, maybe I would need more range than normal. So I might have to... Uh, use more constructors to gain initial range or have more range modules uh, but basically there are three key main areas where you need to focus if you're going to have a chance of out colonizing the AIs which is possible to do even on the hardest of difficulty levels godlike suicidal I'm still able to coloni out colonize the AI uh, a reasonable amount of time on that difficulty on most maps so uh, if you're going to do that, those three key areas are research. You need to really focus on getting certain key technologies uh, to help out with your ship's movement, your colony ship's movement and range early on. There's production. If you're going to out colonize the AI, you need to crank out those colony ships as quickly as possible. So you just need a certain amount of manufacturing on your home world and starting worlds. And also there's scouting. You need to make good decisions about where to... Uh, move your ships to to find those habitable worlds and basically you should treat it as a race uh, against the AI. The AI will colonize places if you're not quick enough and uh, if they out colonize you they're probably going to do better and it's going to be hard to come back from that situation in a lot of circumstances uh, especially on the harder difficulty levels. So let's check out research. So the key areas I would recommend you research straight away on most map sizes are along this path here. Basically all of these areas are the movements and engine areas, uh, techs. So you can see that gives you a bonus to movement, extra engines, that actually gives you extra range and sense as well. The range is uh, reasonably important. This tech, now on the very smallest maps actually you might not need so many of these. Uh, you might be better for you to just start cranking out colony ships straight away rather than research these first. But um, on medium maps and large maps, I would definitely research a lot of these techs uh, early. So the next tech is an extra movement point or uh, mass reduction of your colony and constructor modules. That one probably isn't very good in most circumstances. This one may actually be better short term than the movement point. I haven't really tried it out recently, but um, basically you could fit an extra engine on your colony ships if you uh, research this and have maybe an extra few movement points with the iron drive. So, But this affects all your ships and it's probably better long term. Iron drive is just a better type of engine. On this map type I will be researching up to this point, but probably not beyond it, On at least early on. Now on really massive, gigantic type maps, it may be even worthwhile early on researching up to here to get the uh, drive mass reduced and maybe even the extra movement points. But that's going to be my first tack here. So uh, with the movement done, let's check out our ships. Now no matter which race you play as, you always start with a scout ship, a colony ship and a survey ship. Survey ship actually finds anomalies 
So anomalies are basically small bonuses that you get, usually money, research or ships. Early on I'd recommend you actually use the survey ship to find habitable planets rather than look for anomalies in the main. Uh, it's really much more important early on to find out uh, places to colonize, at least on most maps. The starting colony ship that you have, I actually recommend you don't colonize uh, starting habitable planet within your starting system, which most races start out with. I believe the Yor, Thalans and Iconians just have one really big world. The other races have a planet that you can colonize though, which is usually pretty crappy. The starting colony ship actually has pretty decent engines and uh, range, so it's much better used to scout out for better colony sites in my opinion on most maps. Uh, I tend to prefer to colonize at the outskirts of the range. You can see that uh, white line around there. So uh, it's a star system on the edge of this. So that Basically every time you colonize a planet extend your range further so you'd be able to move ships even further out in the galaxy and colonize uh, elsewhere. Uh, the scout ship is pretty self-explanatory, so just use the scout, and I'd recommend you probably send them out in each uh, three different directions. So I'm going to use my scout ship to come back here. You tend to I recommend you colonize furthest away in the main that you can, and colonize uh, outwards in. That way you can nick planets that you wouldn't be able to get uh, normally, that the eye would get to quicker and the AI has more distance to travel then towards your nearer planets so they will lose that on that as well so let's move this colony ship I think I'll move it up in a northern direction up here the survey ship can come down in this uh, southern direction Asteroids slow your movement down, but it was the last point of movement, so it didn't really matter. And this scout ship... Um, I'll bring it out over here. I'll find the stuff near to us with the scout ship. Okay, and I'm actually going to buy a colony ship. I recommend you do this to uh, get that start in world in your system. Mars in this case, with the Terrans. Now, uh, this is a colony ship I've made previously, so it's stripped off all the engines and range as cheap as possible. It's still very expensive, but you actually start with a huge amount of credits, so best time to use those credits is early on. Uh, that's when you get the most benefit from them. So, I also should focus on research as well if I'm going to get that tech quickly. 100% focus is the way to go in Galsa 3. If you're it means you have to micromanage more, but uh, that's how you get things done quickly. So we actually start with a research bonus here, so that's pretty useful for us. I'm actually going to increase my research by taking, by building that here as well. I've actually got really lucky here with my starting uh, resources. So we get an extra three for that, and I'll buy that. I'm also going to switch that to social, which I don't need yet, but uh, I don't want to accidentally waste production, but accidentally. Uh, shipyard can stay there. I think I've done everything this turn. Okay. Now, we're going to press cancel on that. The reason why I do that is because I don't want... Well, if you press cancel, you get to choose where you place the colony ship when it exits the shipyard for a start. So that's one reason to do it. The other reason is I want as few population as possible. Uh, basically your population determines how much production you have on a world. You can see there at the bottom raw research. This is based off your population and also your approval level. I think there are some buildings which give you raw amounts as well later on. So if your approval is really high you get an extra 1.25 bonus I believe on your raw research amount or raw manufacturing amount. Uh, you can see that raw amount there. And those percentage bonuses are modified based on your raw research so um, let's put that on 100% again so we get an extra 70% of 19.6 there to f get that amount 33.3 if my if the math's correct so yeah having taking less population off the starting world is a good idea if we want to keep our raw production 
good. But obviously, later on, we'll want to find ways to increase our population on uh, the worlds that we colonize. Right, let's keep on moving uh, these ships down here. So I think I'll move the service ship over here. I'll get the scout to come find out about those worlds. This colony ship can come up in this general direction. The reason why I don't alter my movement like that is because there are pirates in the game, which are ships that can destroy your ships. And later on, of course, the AI, if you're at war, can destroy your ships as well. So this is a way to prevent getting attacked by pirates. And also, you do kind of need to be a bit careful, arguably, sometimes to uh, find uh, certain things. If you're auto in, then you may miss them or may want to move back because uh, you've moved too far. It can be a good reason to auto sometimes because it uh, avoids things like nebulas and asteroids automatically, even ones you can't see. So you can basically find out about things that uh, you don't know where they are with, before you can actually see them, if you see what I mean. Right, uh, the scout ship uh, is done, and shipyard. I should actually move my shipyard somewhere. Now, shipyards, based on where you locate them, the manufacturing amounts that go to them is affected. If you move them to beyond six tiles of a planet that is sending manufacturing amounts to it, then you start to get decay. Humans have an ability which lessens this amount but doesn't get rid of it. So I want to keep this shipyard within six tiles of Earth and Mars, uh, preferably. So I'm going to put it up in that general direction. Maybe, hopefully there's a habitable planet there that I can colonize and send production to the shipyard as well. It's kind of in the opposite direction to where I really want to send my ships though, so I don't know. That's a bit questionable and arguably in a circumstance. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's move to there. And let's... Uh, should I buy some more research? I probably should do. Uh, let's buy that there. Okay. I'm not sure if I forgot that last turn or not. Uh, right, let's move a colony ship up here. Okay, let's bring scout down there and survey ship down there. Pirates tend to be around the star systems actually, so that's when you need to be most careful with the uh, movement. Uh, this can get us asked to Mars. No event on the first. Uh, Colony. So let's get the production up and running here. I'm going to use this to help create the colony ships. At least early on. Later on I might uh, or it maybe change it to do something else. Let's uh, put on social. Get that done as quickly as possible. And focus on production. Because we're the Terrans we get a free basic improvement as well. And it's actually production overflow finally in the game these days as well. So that production should go on to the next one. Right, and next turn. Did I forget to buy something again then? Don't know. Right, I'm going to start to get my production up. Let's buy a factory. That gives us a boost there. I'm going to cover adjacency bonuses and specialization in a different video, but basically they give you a boost. So you can see there, uh, that's a four level of adjacency, so it's going to give us an extra 20%. Uh, next research, so that is interstellar done, so we get a moving point to all our existing and future ships and I can now make better ships as well because we have better range and uh, engines. I'm going to go for the long term one here, the extra point in movement, but uh, yeah, debatable which one you go for here. And let's keep on exploring. Now there's a rule of three which is really important for you to know about when it comes to planets. Basically, they can't be more than three tiles away from a star. So you want to explore three tiles around a star in most circumstances, otherwise you might miss out on a planet. Uh, this can come over here. And we've actually found a habitable planet. So that may change where I want to put my shipyard. One, two, three, four, five, six. I may change my decision again if there's uh, a better world out over here. That is quite a distance away actually, so it's not brilliant, but 
Karen's decay is less than uh, many other races. In this, if you can colonize a third planet pretty early on, then you can probably get your colony ships out in one turn eventually. In a not too distant time as well. Maybe 15 to 20 turns. It will take you to do that. Uh, let's... I've done that. Enter. Okay. Yet another have to planet. Oh, that's probably a better option actually. So let's do this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So I'm gonna use that world. I'm gonna colonize that relatively soon and then shift production from those three worlds to that shipyard and get colonies out in one turn. Okay, rule of three again, so let's make sure I look around this world properly, and then I'll come down here, I think. This, all of these I can backfill later on, so I'm not going to be concerning myself with those too much. Currently, this colony ship can come up here still. I use a colony ship I make to get these. Uh, right, so one, two, three, four. Oops, I probably meant to buy a factory then. Let's um, we get a just bonus there, and there's no more bonuses. Let's make one there then. How much have I got left? Might make one more and leave it at that. Make or buy one more. Right, so once I've got Iron Drive, we're going to start to make some colony ships. Production should be up to a very good level by then. Right, so rule of three here. Right, I'm actually out of movement. Uh, survey ship can come down here. And I think I'll come down to that one. I probably will be able to colonize there pretty soon. And then continue moving on down there with the survey ship. I actually might go over to there first. I think that's a better idea. Uh, the scout ship can find out. It's about down there. It's coming down there, isn't it? That's being bought. Senator. Okay. I think that's all. Let's go to three around it. Now, hopefully, there's half the planet there to extend my range over there. Uh, this colony ship, right, gonna, uh, survey ship, we're going to bring it out there. If there is an anomaly on the way, I will pick it up, but um, it's not the main area of focus. Oh, and there's actually another half the planet here. Okay, I'm probably going to bring a scout ship to find out about those worlds now. Uh, scout ship doesn't have much range. I use colony ships instead of making scouts. They basically do as good a job. They actually have more cargo space on. So, because they use cargo hulls instead of tiny hulls. I'm going to put... Actually, there, and I'm probably going to make that one rather than buy it. I'm not 100% on that, though. How many turns for that? Two. One turn. Uh, how how's Mars looking? Right. Yeah, I'll make that last um, factory, I think. Right. Lots of nebulas, which slow their movement. And that scout. I might bring that up to there, actually. So let's go there with the scout ship. My shipyard's a while away from getting into position still, sadly. Okay. Right, so we've done the iron drive. After that, I don't think I, on this map I probably need that. I can probably colonize maybe a quarter to a third of the planets, hopefully, with that. And I don't think going beyond it would help out much. I mean, a six turns is a long time. On the biggest map sizes, maybe that would be worthwhile, but maybe not on this one. So, 
I tend to go for this tech next. Get the Colonial Hospital. That increases the growth rate on your planets. Uh, so more production, a couple of good improvements as well. Other than that, you probably want to get to that tech pretty quickly. Get the morale up on your planets. Some of those techs, well, those techs are important uh, later on as well. If you want some extra capacity, which you probably don't need at this stage or near to this stage, then you may want to come down here. But um, that's where I'm going to next. Okay. Uh, right, so I can't quite see up there, Sally. Don't quite have the range. And let's find out about that then. Since we're near to it. There is actually half the planet there as well. Right. And right, we've got Iron Drive now, but I'll make one more factory. So let's. Uh, micromanage a bit here, just get up to 30 amount, which is what you need to make a factory. Okay, and Mars. Uh, two turns. I might actually make one more factory on Earth, allow the shipyard to get into a better location. Okay. Um. Yeah, why not? So we'll do one more. Micromanage again. It's going a bit to extreme levels, but so oh well. Mars is done. Shipyard gets nearer to where I want it. And then we can start to make those colony ships. Wow. That's uh, what you dream of. So I need to get up there pretty quickly. I'm actually just outside this range. I'm going to call that's I can't colonize that because you need a tank, but I'm gonna colonize that and then I'm gonna make a colony ship to get that straight away. Um, might not be worth me delaying a turn here, but I doubt the AI is going to beat me to that. You never know that they could, uh, if there's one near to it. Let's move over there. Okay, and enter. Okay, let's anchor that. Sadly, I haven't got it where I wanted it, but uh, I need to get ships up now. So, as you can see, I've played the Terrans before, so I've got a ton of ships in my ship list. About this stage in the game with Iron Drive, uh, you can base this is probably the best ship you can make. So, this has uh, basically a couple of environmental supports and a couple of Iron Drives, movement speed of 10. At this stage in the game, the AI is probably going to have a movement of about 6 ish with their best ships, so you can really outpace them. Uh, cost is quite cheap as well, 125, not too expensive. Now, you should probably make colony ships on what you need, well, ships in general, based on what uh, job you require them to do. You're not always going to need that amount of range, you might not need that range models, and then you can make it faster. If there's a, well, I wouldn't need much in the way of uh, range to get to that, for example, so you might want to make a ship that has less uh, range modules. The further you're going, the more speed you need as well, for example. So you basically make ships based on what you need, and I'd recommend you do that. Of course, means you need to micromanage, but uh, if you're wanting to beat the game on higher, highest of difficulty levels, that's what you need to do. So let's colonize that. We get an event. So I'm, not, I'm just going to pick anything here. Uh, basically, some of the events do actually help you out. Some of the ideologies help you out in colony spamming. You can get to that within, I don't know, maybe about eight colonizing eight planets. That gives you a huge amount of MLG manufacturing, so you could get things out in one turn pretty easily with that. Uh, pragmatic, free constructors, that's a way to increase range. You may actually be able to upgrade them into colony ships as well, potentially. So that's a way you can colony spam even quicker. Going benevolent, you could get a free colony ship. So all of those are probably the most helpful in uh, colony spamming, I assume. If I'm not missing out on anything. There's a bit of production there as well. So, with that, our range is increased considerably. So we can go all the way up to there. Got to pick that as well. And let's continue to scout out here. Uh, idle colony. Let's switch our production. 100% focus is always, or almost always, 
Uh, so we've got 46 production on that on Earth, and with Mars also being finished, I believe now we can switch that to military. And if we take a look at our shipyard, you can put that on to constantly make them if you wish. 68 production, so we're getting colonies out now. Really good colony ships as well, not just crappy ones out every couple of turns. Now if I colonize that planet as well and switch its uh, production to that shipyard, then I could probably get a colony out every turn, a good colony ship as well. So once I'm able to do that by maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 to 25, then I can colonize at an extremely quick rate and we'd be able to bag a huge amount of planets. And this is what I would generally recommend your uh, colonizer strategy to be like. Okay, I'm actually going to call it an end of the video at this point. I think I covered just about everything I wanted to. If I forgot anything, I'll cover it in my full Let's Play of the game, which is going to be out just after the 14th of May 2015, when the full version of the game is released. If you have any feedback about this video, uh, or about uh, future guide videos that you'd like me to do, please let me know as well. The next guide video is going to be on planetary management. Uh, tile management and specialization. Also, I'll cover things like adjacency bonuses in more detail as well in that video. Uh, you can find a link to the uh, guides playlist in the comments section also. If you're actually new to the channel, you may want to consider subscribing. Not only is there going to be much more Galsa 3 content on the channel uh, very soon, but there's also existing content for Galsa 3. I actually did quite a few videos for previous versions of the betas. Also, there are many other Forex games that you may be interested in as well. I've done videos for like uh, Sci-Fi: Brave New World, for example, uh, Endless Legends, Endless Space Disharmony. Uh, there are other games as well, of game types. Players of Eternity is a game I covered a lot. So there's quite a few class videos that uh, I've got really good feedback that you may want to check out. Uh, also, if you fancy helping me out, please give this video a like. Really rely on uh, people liking my videos to boost my videos and views. Uh, that's a way that uh, YouTube search rankings modify my videos. They feature higher up so more people can find out about the channel. You may have actually found the channel by using the search feature yourself. Who knows? So uh, that's a way you can uh, help people out uh, that have a similar interest to yourself. And I'm really grateful if you do that. Right. I think I've covered just about everything. That's enough of me rambling. So I'm going to call it an end of the video here. Thank you for watching again. And I'll see you next time.